a job to do, and we know there's a lot of folks counting on us to go do this, and we know sort of as first responders that, you know, you know, we're in the business to try to help people make decisions on whether to get out of town or stay. Or The 2014 hurricane season started this past Sunday. To get the most accurate information about a developing storm, meteorologists depend on data provided by the hurricane hunters based at Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi. Lieutenant Colonel John Talbot is the chief meteorologist. He sat down with our Eric Reynolds to talk about what it's like to fly into hurricanes and why his job is so important to all of us. Here's the interview. We have the opportunity to see what it's like on the inside of the storm. What makes these storms tick? Well, we can physically see that when we're flying and measuring what's going on and, and see these changes happen as they happen. So we get a bird's eye view of the whole thing and physically be in it. That's why we love it so much. Lieutenant Colonel John Talbot is a chief meteorologist of the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron based at Keesler Air Force Base. Also known as the Hurricane Hunters, Talbot and his fellow airmen fly into the storm to get that important information. So I will speak of possibly uh, some thunderstorms near the center. This is where the strongest winds were found. On the job for 25 years, Talbot says when offered the position as a weather guy, he could not say no. They had an individual here that was, was getting air sick a lot and they couldn't do the job on the airplane. So they had to find a quick replacement. So he asked me, hey, would you like to go fly into hurricanes? That's the best thing a weather guy could ever do. You know, you get to see the inside of a storm versus the outside. So yeah, so I volunteered to come down here. And Talbot volunteered for a job at the computer, but in a uniquely different environment. As a weather person, we're on the what I call the other side of the forecast desk. I work in front of a computer and I'm collecting all this information. It's hard to do things, interact with that computer when things are bouncing around. So it, it can get pretty tough. But uh, you know, most of our guys have steel stomachs. But it could be nerving, a little you know, you could it's a little bit I wouldn't say scary, but you can't really prepare yourself for it. Make sure our seatbelts are buckled, you know, and fastened. Buckled in and with all precautions taken. Talbot says every storm is different. You can never expect anything because you just don't know. We, we fly through the storm and we, and we make multiple passes you know, on, on a mission. We take it one step at a time when, when we're going through the storm. We use a lot of the instrumentation on the airplane, the radar, to look at things and make our decision before we go through like the eye wall. It's when these storms are intensifying or weakening that, that they're, they're a little bit more dangerous to fly through or the more more rough because the atmosphere is doing something. Um, it's changing. It can be a very rough ride going through the rain bands. The rain makes a lot of noise when it hits the windows of the plane. And you know, you think those windows are gonna break. Turbulence is a part of the hurricane hunter's experience. You know, you hear about these events that happen on airlines where, you know, bags go flying, come out of the racks. That's the type of turbulence we get. We expect it, so we're kind of prepared for it. Um, and it's a roller coaster type ride where you, you go into a thunderstorm and, and you hit the updraft and the airplane goes up and then on the opposite side there's a downdraft and the airplane goes down. And then there's times where it just shakes. And I can remember one storm, Hurricane Luis was back in the 90s by Puerto Rico that the plane was shaking so much I thought the rivets were going to come out and I started thinking to myself, man, why am I doing this? It was very nerve wracking. Storms like Luis may make Talbot's job as a hurricane hunter difficult, but he's never concerned about his plane. We know the airplane is pretty darn strong. These are pretty robust machines. We would break before the airplane probably would. We have a lot of experienced folks on our crews who ride through the turbulence and the, really the trick is you don't want to fight things. You don't want to fight the airplane. The airplane's going to go where it's going to go. You get through it 30 seconds later. Then if you're down lower than when you, where you were expected to be, you climb up back to your altitude and, and you know, you hold on. And Talbot considers his job similar to a first responder. And when the storms come, he knows folks are counting on the hurricane hunters. We know we, we have a job to do, and we know there's a lot of folks counting on us to go do this. And we know sort of as first responders that, you know, you know, we're in the business to try to help people make decisions on whether to get out of town or stay. Or, or And then the guys that are making this, this important forecast, we need to make sure that the data is, is absolutely correct. This is such a unique thing, a unique job. Um, 
and it, it does a lot of good for a lot of people, I thought, you know, this is really going to work. This is a great way to help people. In Biloxi, Eric Reynolds, Fox 10 News. You can tell he loves his job, right? Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Colonel Talbot says the information the hurricane hunters collect also affects the economy before and after the storm makes landfall. He says every mile hurricane's track is narrowed, saved $250,000, and those are dollars that would be spent to warn or plan for mm -hmm. evacuation, business closing, and locating recovery equipment and supplies. Talbot says he loves his job so much he plans on staying with the hurricane hunters until he's not allowed to fly or retires. Well, tomorrow is the 70th anniversary of the Allied invasion of Normandy. Hear how people at home and overseas are commemorating.